Hello and welcome to IITN Academy. In this session, we will learn about sound. Sound is a form of energy, like heat energy, light energy, potential energy, and kinetic energy. It causes a sensation of hearing in our ears. So what is use of sound? Actually, sound helps us communicate with each other. Hence, without sound, we would not be able to talk to each other. In this slide, we will learn how sound is produced. Sound is produced due to the vibration of object, the motion of materials or objects causes vibration. Vibration is a kind of rapid to and fro motion of an object around central position. It is also referred to as oscillation. In the last slide, we have seen how technically sound is produced. In this slide, we will see few examples of how different sound is produced. A stretched rubber band, when plucked, vibrates and produces sound. In the music room of your school, you hear the sounds made by musical instruments like flute, tabla, harmonium, guitar, etc. because of vibration. When a spoon is beaten on the plate, it starts vibrating and produces sound. In this slide, we will learn how sound is produced in human being. In humans, sound is produced because of vibration of his voice box or larynx. It is situated at the upper end of windpipe. There are two stretched membranes called vocal cords attached in larynx with a narrow slit between them for passes air In this slide, we see mechanism of vocal cords for producing sound. Sound is produced by the vibrations of vocal cords. The vocal cords are attached to muscles which change the tension or stretching in the cords and the distance between the cords. In vocal cord open case, the muscle of vocal cords are completely relaxed, due to which the vocal cords are separated and loose, so that air from the lungs 
passes through them without producing any sound. When we are not talking or singing, the two vocal cords are far apart with a lot of gap between them. In vocal cord closed case, when we want to speak, the muscles of vocal cords contract, due to which the two vocal cords become stretched and close together, leaving only a narrow slit between them. The lungs pass a current of air between the two vocal cords. This air makes the vocal cords vibrate and the vibrating vocal cords produce sound. When we talk or sing, we actually make our vocal cords vibrate and vibration of vocal cords by expelled air produce vocal sounds. Let us see how sound produced by vibrating body reaches to our ear. What happens after it enters the ear? A vibrating object causes air molecules to vibrate. This creates regular compression and rarefaction in medium and this reach to our ear as sound. When sound vibrations reach our ear, Pinna collects the sound wave and pass into the ear canal. An ear has an eardrum inside connected to three small bones. These waves then strike the eardrum which starts vibrating with the same frequency. This causes three bones hammer, anvil, and stirrup, also called ossicles, of the middle ear, to vibrate. The amplified sound wave then reaches to inner ear, where cochlea, spiral structure, converts these sound waves into electrical signals. The auditory nerve takes the signal to the brain and brain interprets sound. Here we will see how sound travel from one place to another place. The traveling of sound is called propagation of sound. Sound is propagated by the to and fro motion of particles. of the medium. Here you can see to and fro motion of the particle. When a body vibrates, the air in its neighborhood is alternately compressed and rarefied. The compressed air has higher pressure than surrounding air. It therefore pushes the air particles near it, causing compression to move forward. A rarefaction or low pressure 
is created at the original place. Hence, a medium is necessary for the propagation of sound waves. The matter or substance through which sound is transmitted is called a medium. The medium can be solid, liquid or gas. Sound cannot travel in vacuum. A true vacuum refers to the complete absence of matter sound wave can travel only through matter so sound needs a physical medium in order to propagate anywhere we hear sound which comes to us through air medium particles aquatic animals communicate as sound travels through water Let us use the concepts learned so far for propagation of the sound. Why? Sound cannot be heard on the moon. Sound cannot be heard on the surface of moon because there is no air on the moon to carry the sound waves. If an astronaut talks to another astronaut on the moon, he would see the lips moving, but no sound will be heard at all. This is because sound cannot travel through the vacuum which exists on the surface of moon. The astronauts who land on moon talk to each other through wireless sets using radio waves. This is because radio waves can travel even through vacuum. Here we will see an experiment to show that sound can travel though liquid medium. Experiment to show that sound can travel through liquids. Let us take a tub filled with water. Hold a bell in one hand and dip it in water. Keep one of your ears gently on the surface of water and ring the bell inside the water. We will be able to hear the sound clearly. This shows that sound can travel through liquids also. Here, we have to describe an experiment to show that sound cannot travel though vacuum. Let us take a container with a tight closing lid. Make a hole at the bottom of the container. Connect a vacuum pump to this hole with a rubber tube. The vacuum pump is used to extract air from the container. Put a cell phone inside the container and close it with the lid. 
call the number of the cell phone so that it rings. We can hear the sound clearly. Now, start the vacuum pump and extract the air from the container. Call the number of the cell phone again. We cannot hear the sound now. This experiment proves that sound cannot travel through vacuum. Let us try to see this hot question. An explosion occurs on the moon. Will it be? A. Seen. B. Heard. On the earth instantly or after some time. If an explosion occurs on the moon, it will be seen after approximately 1.2 second, but not heard because there is no air on moon. Another question is about the game hide and seek. How a blindfolded person can guess which player is closest to him. In the game Hide and Seek, the blindfolded person can guess which player is closest to him by hearing sound created by the player. In this slide, we will learn about speed of sound in different medium. Sound takes some time to travel from sound producing body to our ears. The speed of sound tells you as the rate at which sound travels from sound producing body to our ears. The speed of sound depends on different factors. In this topic, we will learn about different factors affecting speed of sound. First factor is nature of medium. that is, material through which it travels. Speed of sound is different, in different material. In air it is, 344 meters per second. In water, 1500 meters per second. In iron, 5130 meters per second. You can see speed of sound, in solid, is greater than speed in liquid, and, Speed in liquid is greater than speed of sound in gases. Hence, you can see speed of sound is highest in solid and lowest in gas. In this topic, we will learn about impact of temperature and humidity on speed of sound. Here you can see, as temperature increases, speed of sound increases. Similarly, speed of sound is less in dry air and speed of sound is more in humid air. As the humidity increases, speed of sound increases.
Here, we will learn what is vibration, what it means, and its properties. A repeated back and forth motion is called vibration. Back and forth means going forward and coming back. When a swing moves back and forth repeatedly, we say that swing is making vibration or oscillation. A simple pendulum can be made by tying about the one meter long thread from a small metal ball and suspending it from a height. The small metal ball of pendulum is called bob. When the pendulum is at rest, then its bob is in normal position or central position. Let us learn more about vibration using simple pendulum. If we displace the bob of pendulum to the left side to position B and then release it, it will start vibrating or oscillating like a swing between position B and C. The bob first goes from position B to positions C and then comes back to B. It again goes from position B to positions C and then comes back to B. This motion of the pendulum is repeated again and again. The pendulum bob is vibrating or oscillating between position B and C. The position A of bob is called central position and the position B and C are called the extreme position of the bob. When the pendulum bob goes from one extreme position B to the other extreme position C and then comes back to B, it completes one vibration or one oscillation. Every vibration or oscillation has three characteristics, amplitude, time period, and frequency. Here, we will try to understand amplitude of vibration. The maximum distance to which the bob of a vibrating pendulum goes from its central position is called amplitude of vibration or amplitude of oscillation. The distance AB is the amplitude of vibration of this simple pendulum. A is the rest or equilibrium position or mean position. The amplitude is the size of the maximum displacement equals AB or CA. Please note that amplitude is not B to C. One cycle is one complete oscillation. That is C to a to B to C or B to C to B is one cycle. Here we will try to understand time period of vibration. The time taken by pendulum bob to complete one vibration or one oscillation is called the time period of pendulum.
the time taken by one vibration, or one oscillation of a simple pendulum, is very short, and hence, cannot be measured accurately. So, to find the time taken by one vibrations, we measure the time taken by a large number of vibration, dividing the total time by the total number of vibrations. We get the time for one vibration of the pendulum. For a given pendulum, the time period is the same every time. The time period of a pendulum depends only on the length of pendulum. It does not depend on amplitude of vibrations. It is represented by T S I unit is second time period equals time divided by numbers of oscillation or vibration. Here, we will try to understand frequency of vibration, the number of vibrations or oscillations made in one second. is called the frequency of vibration. The unit of frequency of vibration or oscillation of a vibrating object is hertz. When an object makes one vibration per second, its frequency is said to be one hertz. If an object makes ten vibrations per second, then its frequency will be ten hertz. We can increase the frequency of a simple pendulum by reducing the length of its thread. And we can decrease the frequency of a simple pendulum by increasing the length. Here, we will learn about characteristics of sound. Sounds are produced by the vibrating object. If more energy is supplied to an object by plucking it or hitting it more strongly, then the object will vibrate with the greater amplitude and produce a louder sound. The loudness of sound depends on the amplitude of vibration.
of sound producing objects. When the amplitude of vibration is large, the sound produced is loud. If the amplitude of vibration is small, the sound produced is feeble. Here, we will learn about pitch of the sound. Pitch is that characteristic of sound by which we can distinguish between different sounds of the same loudness. We can distinguish between a man's voice and a woman voice even without seeing them. This is because man's voice and woman's voice differ in their pitch. A man's voice is flat, having low pitch, whereas woman's voice is shrill, having a high pitch. The pitch of sound depends on the frequency of vibration. The pitch of sound is directly proportional to its frequency. A. If the frequency of vibration is low, the sound produced has a low pitch. B. If the frequency of vibration is high, the sound produced has a high pitch. The pitch of baby's voice is higher than that of a woman. A man's voice is having low pitch Here, we will learn about shrill. A sound having high frequency is said to be shrill. The voice of a woman is shriller than that of a man. The voice of man having low frequency or low pitch is said to be deep or flat. As the frequency of vibration of an object increases, the pitch or shrillness of sound produced by it also increases. One when we go from a man to a woman and then a small baby, the frequency of vibrations of their vocal cords increases due to which the pitch of shrillness of the voice increases. Here we will learn about quality of sound. We can distinguish between the sounds or notes produced by a sitar and a flute even without seeing these musical instrument. This is because the sound produced by a sitar and flute differ in quality. Quality is that characteristic of a sound which enables us to distinguish between the sound produced by different sound producing objects even if they are of same loudness and pitch. Sound produced by different musical instruments like sitar, flute, piano, violin, guitar, veena, shinai, 
harmonium, trumpet, and tabla can be distinguished by their quality. The quality of sound produced by different musical instruments or different singers is different because they produce sound waves of different shapes. Here, we will learn about noise, sounds, that are loud, and unnecessary, are called noise. The presence of loud, unwanted, and disturbing sound, in our environment, is called noise pollution. Major sources of noise pollution. 1. The motor vehicles, running on the road, produce noise pollution by blowing horn and sound of their engines 2. The bursting of crackers on various social and religious occasions produce noise pollution 3. The various machine in factories make loud sounds and cause noise pollution Five, the playing of loudspeakers and bands at marriages and other social functions. Six, the construction of building produce a lot of noise pollution in the surrounding. Seven, loud playing of radio, speaker system and television produce noise pollution. Eight, kitchen appliances cause noise pollution. 9. Use of desert cooler and air conditioners cause noise pollution. Here, we will learn about harms of noise pollution. Following are the harms of the noise pollution. Loud noise can cause great harm to our ears. Constant loud noise reduces the hearing power of our ears. Loud noise can even damage ears permanently and cause deafness. Loud noise can cause a person to lose concentration in his work or studies. Loud noise can cause an ailment called hypertension. Loud noise can cause irritation and headache. Loud noise during night time disturbs our sleep. Continued lack of sleep is bad for health. Here we will learn how to control noise pollution. We can control noise pollution by adopting below measures. We should not play radio, stereo systems, and televisions too loudly. The horns of motor vehicles should not be gone unnecessarily. The bursting of crackers should be avoided. The noise-making factory and airports should be shifted away from the residential area of the city. Loudspeakers should be played at low volume during marriages and other social function. Trees should be planted along the roads and around building to reduce the noise pollution from the roads. Here we will learn about musical sound. We do not enjoy Hearing the unpleasant sound of noise, the sounds, which are pleasant, to hear, are called, L musical sound. They are produced by, the regular vibrations, of the sound producing sources. All the musical instruments, produce musical sounds. The speakers of radio, 
stereo system and television also produce musical sound when a person sing a song he or she also produces musical sound if however a musical sound becomes too loud it becomes noise 